I'm sure a lot of people thought this day would never come. You've been waiting in the wings, foaming at the mouth with anticipation. But the day has finally come. Today, we are finally going to review, after all these years, El Tigre, The Many Adventures of Manny Rivera. This game was released on the PS2 on March 11th, 2008 and immediately took the gaming world by storm. The revolutionary linear platforming action was stuff of dreams and never replicated by any other game series. Truly, this game is a masterpiece of our time. It's, it's the true hallmark of gaming and it's one that's going to be remembered for many years to come. Greetings, Earth human. I am Dorga Dort of Planet Nefdino. We have watched your EA NASCAR game reviews for years, and have waited a long time for your review of 07. When the day of the 10th anniversary for 07 came, I was giddy with anticipation, constantly refreshing your channel, frothing in excitement. Um... You are aware I always post at 4.30, right? Silence. I waited and waited for the video to post. But that moment of release never came. Not a day passes that I don't remember the heartbreak I felt that day. Which is why I have come to your planet today. I cannot wait any longer. You will review NASCAR 07 today. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Man, some people just can't take no for an answer. I said that I would get to it at some point. When are people going to learn to be patient? the NASCAR 07 review too, huh? You're damn right I am. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> okay. Okay. I've waited too long on this one. I'll admit that. But we can wait one more day. One more day is fine, okay? One more day. One more day. It's all right, it's okay. I had a weird day, but tomorrow, tomorrow will be better. Okay! Oh 
Okay! I hear you! Everyone and their mother wants me to review NASCAR 07. I get it, okay? And I, and I know that most people don't even understand why I skipped it to begin with, alright? And you wanna know why I skipped it? I, I, I don't really know myself either, honestly. I have an unfinished, barely longer than one page script that I had started for the 07 review back in 2016. But I guess I never bothered to finish the damn thing. By the time I cared enough to review a NASCAR game again, it was time to do 08. Welp, since it's 2019 and the next mainline NASCAR game isn't until 2011, what better time than now to finally do NASCAR 07? Let's go! This game has a special place in my heart. I mentioned in the 08 review that I hated the fact you couldn't swap cars anymore so much that I went back to the outdated 07 at first. This is probably the NASCAR game I played the absolute most of. I usually say that my favorite EA NASCAR game is 2005, even though I definitely put more hours into 07. I'm not really sure what the actual difference is between the two as far as why I played 07 more. Both were NASCAR games, yep, okay, we got that far. Both have wheeling trucks and bush as well, uh-huh, that sounds good. And both had kick-ass soundtracks, yep, sure. What keeps me going back to 07 probably hinges on the Team Commands mechanic, introduced to NASCAR 06. So now you're probably asking yourself, Well, Kamikaze, why did you prefer 07 over 06 then, if it's just a Team Mechanics? It's the same game, the end! Well, my response to that is, first of all, stop asking so many damn questions, and second of all, NASCAR 06 is actually a stupidly broken game. I didn't even touch on why 06 is so broken in my review, because, let's be honest, I suck back then. First off, in NASCAR 06, there are several game-breaking glitches that will completely ruin your game experience forever. If you sign the Chance 2 Motorsports contract in the Bush series, you'll never be able to complete in another Bush series race ever again because the game either crashes while loading or immediately as you cross the finish line. What cause is this? I don't know, I'm not a programmer. Ask EA, you needy fucks. Another glitch is that apparently if you sign the contract for Ron Hornaday's truck and Craftsman, then Chase Montgomery gets scored twice for some reason. That's pretty random. Why Chase Montgomery? Why not Shigeaki Hattori? Yeah, Shigeaki Hattori's in this game. Why he is and not Matt Crafton, I have no idea, but there he is, in all his pre-success glory. I've experienced this glitch myself in the Cup Series. For some reason, you end up getting scored twice in every race, too. I have no idea what causes this, but it effectively makes getting other people the championship nearly impossible. Wait, why have I spent an entire page of this review on 06? We're supposed to be reviewing 07! Oh, well, yeah, that line from earlier that they're both the same game, the end, is kind of the theme of this video. A reason that I justified never doing this review until now was that 06 and 07 are essentially the same game, but with roster updates. And well, yeah, that's probably 99.9999999999% true, there are a few key differences. Here's a good one. In NASCAR 06, after you qualify for the race, your only option is to quote, quit. The game acknowledges this by saying that any unsaved progress will be lost if you quit, but it's literally the only option besides car setup on the screen. NASCAR 07 fixes this by replacing that quit button with a continue button instead. Now, nine-year-old me was just as picky then as I am now, and I always hated how in 06 you had to quit. And just like John Cena always says, eat your vegetables or something, I don't know. The point that I'm trying to make is that I was really impressed with this little itty-bitty change back when I was so little, so there's already, like, menus 10 out of 10 for NASCAR 07 right there. There are very, very few changes to the driving model of 07. It's almost identical to 06. The main difference between games such as 04 and 05 versus 04 and 07 are how slippery the cars are. In 04 and 05, you're really able to feel the weight of the race car, and when you go off the track and onto the apron, you probably won't die immediately. As for 06 and 07, racing at Dover and Charlotte is nearly impossible because of how the car acts when you come within breathing distance of the apron. If you're lucky, it'll just make you loose and ruin your drive for a good three laps. But if you aren't lucky, you will be sent into full-on spinning top mode and be at the mercy of the centrifugal gods. This is just annoying. You have to take garbage lines just to avoid this stupidity, which will kill you on the higher difficulties. They did fix this in 08, kind of, but on that game, your wheels have essentially been replaced by whatever the hell Jorvan Spears wide around on, so basically you're just in a four-wheel slide at all times there. One key difference between 06 and 07 is the introduction of the All-State Qualifiers, which I discussed at length, my disdain of, in the 08 review. NASCAR 2005's biggest drawing feature had to be the multiple racing series that were integrated for the first time ever in an officially licensed NASCAR game. 
unless you count NASCAR Rumble. With all state qualifiers, you're given the ability to bypass 75% of career mode. Oh. Okay. I thought the entire point of Thunder 2004 career was supposed to be a rag to riches started from the bottom now we're here store. With all state qualifiers, you're able to start from the top and stay at the top. What's the point in even making the other series if you're just allowed to skip it entirely? And I'm fully aware of the argument that if you want to start a new career mode and have already beaten the game once, then yeah, sure, go ahead and skip the hard stuff. But, but come on, you can bypass 75% of the game with one menu! Now what's good about 07 versus 08 and 09 is that you must get every single qualifier to gold completion before you're allowed to jump straight to cup. That makes sense. You're also able to restart the qualifiers in order to try and get gold. And I think there's twice as many challenges than in NASCAR 08 and 09. It's still one of the worst features in a NASCAR game though. And I can hear the comment section screaming from here, Well, Kyle you can skip qualifiers if you want! Yeah, calm down guys, I know you can skip it. It's just wasteful is what it is. You're wasting the experience, the struggle, just to immediately be at the top level from the get-go. What's fight to the top supposed to mean when there's no fight? Wow! Okay, that's enough yelling about the Allstate qualifiers. I think you get it. Speaking of Allstate, they have a really heavy hand in this game. One of the fake team drivers in all four series is named Hans Good. And I never got the joke until like a year into owning the game when I realized, Hey! If you read it like this, then it says Good Hands! Oh my god, that's a slogan! Ah! No. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Anyway, at the end of every race, you have the chance to earn all the Allstate Good Hands drivers award. After nearly 14 years of playing this game, I still have no idea what the criteria is to earn this reward, but I still get it all the time because, I don't know, I guess I'm getting good hands or something? These will unlock a few Allstate themed Thunder plates for free instead of having to fork over the whole 20,000 skill points it would cost to get them otherwise. I don't know really what else to say about the good hands drive reward, it's just a really weird thing that never appears in another NASCAR game. Another thing regarding Allstate is that they have a track named after them in this game. Yeah, there's a lot of tracks that get special names in these games. I don't get it. Allstate was Mr. Clean Speedway in 06, and well, at least we know they'll clean up debris of that track, bare minimum. Mr. Allstate Clean Raceway is actually a reskinned version of the original Rockingham track from 04 and 05. I am not lying when I say that I only just a few weeks before writing this found out that this track was the old Rockingham track. I had no idea until now. Probably because they only go to the track like twice in the season. Whoopsies! Pretty much every fantasy track we've seen in 05 is in this game. Old Spice is really the only track that never got an identity switch at any point in the EA Cinematic Universe. They hoard every other track out to sponsor after sponsor, but Old Spice remained clean and pure. Look at Red Ball Speedway. Then to me. Look back at Red Ball. It's now UPS Speedway. Look back to me. I'm still Old Spice. Look back to UPS Speedway. It's once again Red Ball. And look back to me. I'm still Old Spice. <laughs> Nailed it. I forgot to mention earlier when I was discussing how broken NASCAR 06 was. So in NASCAR 06, the truck series is actually one weekend behind in the calendar. You'll go to California and Cup, then suddenly next week, trucks are racing in California while Cup is off somewhere else. Now that's what I call breaking immersion. Everything else runs pretty much the same way. You'll still get showdowns with Cup drivers as a wheel and regular, and you still run a blank gray 105 car in them. You're still inundated with phone calls from our old buddy Ace Moneymaker. Man, I miss this guy. What's the origin for the last name Moneymaker? Is it, mm, Jewish? <laughs> Look at the case for NASCAR 07 and you'll see a glaring issue. Can you guess what it is? Here, let me zoom in on it. Maybe it'll help you out. Do you see it yet? That's right. Why is Elliot Sadler the cover guy? Okay, okay, I really dropped the ball on this back in 2014 when I reviewed NASCAR 2005. Kevin Harvick being the cover guy, but Ryan Newman being your mentor throughout the game was incredibly strange and made no sense, but at least it made a little sense. Newman was coming off an eight-win season and beat Jimmy Johnson, of all people, for Rookie of the Year. It made sense then to have him be the focus, but why is Harvick the cover guy? At least in Harvick's defense, the entire 2001 season happened pretty recently. At least there's some brand power in Harvick, but come on, Elliot Sadler! Yeah, he had a two-win season in 2004, and yeah, he looked like he was a potential star in the making, but he wasn't even driving the 38 anymore when the game hit the shelves in 2006! What a way to torpedo the success of your game straight out of the starting gate. 
It was outdated the moment the first buyer stuck it in their console. I know that there was some weird competition that led to Sadler getting the cover, but in reality, they should have just hit the abort switch on the plan once Sadler won, especially when he moved to Everham. It was probably too late at that point since the games were in shelves nationwide at that point, but yeah, that hasn't really re stopped recalls in the past, has it? What really is there left to say about this game? I think I've hit on just about everything I possibly could. The question on everyone's mind is why on earth I keep coming back to this game? Why did I pick it to be my flagship NASCAR series after I quote, finished NASCAR Inside Line? Well, for one thing, I think the game is easier than older NASCAR games. I played NASCAR 06 and NASCAR 07 back to back for about three weeks just to see if there was anything I missed out on the past 12 years, and really the only thing I learned is that NASCAR 06 is a broken, messy piece of shit, and NASCAR 07 is generally a well put together game with only a few glaring flaws. It's exactly what it should be, and that's an evolution of the previous year's game. But the previous year's game is so broken and generally unplayable at times that fixing those issues was all they really could accomplish for 2006. So at the end of the day, this game is really solidly put together. I don't like the driving model that much. I think it's actually the worst of the EA PS2 NASCAR games physics engines. And yes, Dover and Charlotte are what is driving that opinion. The graphics are fine, but they really haven't changed much at all from 06, and neither has the sound. It looks and sounds identical to 06. However, where this game shines is replayability. Your game won't break if you sign certain contracts, or give you twice as many points as you should get, which is super nice. But if that's the standard they were going by, then that's pretty sad. This game is exactly what it's supposed to be. EA's yearly roster update. The games only went downhill from here as far as overall experience is concerned. Was this the pinnacle? Is this the best NASCAR game on PS2? That's not a question I'm sure I can answer. The rags to riches career mode in 04 compared to the sheer death of 05, you see the only real advantage this game has is the team command mechanic, which honestly doesn't carry enough water to make it better than 05. I know I've played this game since its release and enjoyed every minute of it, but when it comes to legacy, at least it's better than 06. I give NASCAR 07 6 out of 10 for gameplay, 7 out of 10 for graphics, 5 out of 10 for sound, and 8 out of 10 for replayability. Man, that's strange. I thought that finally reviewing NASCAR 07 would get this weight off my shoulders, but I really don't feel any different. Oh, I can answer that. It's because you're missing one important part of NASCAR 07. Are you talking about the PSP version of this game that's just called NASCAR that I've never played in my life? No. Then what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. No, seriously, I don't, Tails. Just tell me. Look at the screen. And we are going to be the greatest driver ever. Also known as... Keith Urban. I know Keith Urban meant a lot to a lot of people, which is kind of amazing, all things considered. The NASCAR 07 playthrough was just supposed to be me waiting until NASCAR 14 came out to finally play that for the channel, but what it turned out to be was something beyond anything that I could have ever imagined. Honestly, even if I tried, I couldn't replicate that kind of thing. That was, that, that was just naturally just one of the most emotionally satisfying conclusions to any game. Probably, definitely, that I've played so far. Definitely any series that I've ever had. Even through the trials and tribulations of every NASCAR Awake playthrough, even after the trials and tribulations of like the Gran Turismo license challenges, and then you got the random games like Monsters Inc. and Tom and Jerry Housetrap. But when it comes down to it, just the emotional success of being able to do something that you never thought you could do for the first time. That is special. And I can see why I never did this review until now. Because I didn't understand what made this game so special. I never understood what this game truly meant. Well, anyway, back to never reviewing any more games. See ya!
You've been waiting in the wings, foaming at the mouth in anticipation. But the day... Oh shit, the TV's still not muted. Jesus. Truly, this game is a masterpiece of our time. I don't know. Here goes nothing. <laughs> oh my god, dude. So, I just put one of my favorite video games in the toilet. Oh, I wake up in the bed in fear. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! That's what happens next. Oh my god. What a fucking sequence. What a fucking sequence. What a fucking video this is gonna be.